now that I've given a brief sort of overview of uh, uh, the right and the good by Sir William David Ross, um, I just want to talk a little bit about in this in this video that is a little bit about the book structure. It's always very helpful. I know it sounds trivial, but it's always very helpful to look at the table of contents. It can a good table of contents gives you an excellent idea of what the book is up to. And so, not surprisingly, the right and the good divides, the text itself divides into two parts. Part one, dealing with this concept of right, and part two, dealing with this concept of good. Interestingly, you have a lot more going on in the second part, so that gives you a hint. It's what, what is the, going to be the most important. It's not something you can definitely conclude, but you get an idea of how the author is breaking this up. Because, for instance, notice the parallel. Chapter one of, uh, of, of part one and the first chapter, this is chapter three of part two, both deal with an analysis of the concept. So in the first one, if you want to get a sort of an overview of the book, when you think about reading it, the first thing you want to do is, okay, notice that, that Ross is defining his terms. What does he mean by right? And then what does he mean by good? And so, and that'll give you an idea of how to interpret this ampersand, namely, uh, what does he mean by the right and the good? How do they link? Are they, or do they share something or relate or whatnot? You can start to put this together. So this is how you can start reading these books uh, rather than just simply plowing your way. It's a good thing to read the preface, look at the, uh, 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 the the overview of the table of contents as an and an old professor of mine used to always say make sure you read it into the dark parts of the back of the book um, so I would say yes but you also read the, the the preface as well an author will often give you an idea of what he or she is up to so you've got analyses of right analyses of good and then this is probably the most famous part of this book as a matter of fact uh, typically, when Ross is taught, if he's ever taught in philosophy courses, normally that's what people center on. What makes right acts right? So how do we, quote, sort of for lack of a better term, how do you apply the term right as Ross understands the concept of right? Uh, and then, of course, it's a major analysis in the second part of the concept of good. What does it mean? What is its nature? No, so there's, so the, the meaning and the nature are split. Um, what things are good? How, you know, so, so he's gonna talk about right there, you get the, you, you clearly understand that it, it's probably going to be some kind of pluralism or at least some kind of, you know, not just a single thing is good. Um, and also uh, talking about degrees. Now the, the heading here doesn't tell you whether or not he thinks there are, but he thinks it's an important question. So he's gonna analyze this. And then notice we have a qualifier in the end, moral goodness. So is that a special, a special kind of good or what is that? Or, or is that ultimately what good is? It's a moral concept or whatnot. So you can clearly get, it's, it's, it's got a kind of an analytic style uh, to it and you can get from the structure of it, there's two main uh, uh, sections. One, you know, the analysis of one concept and, and the results of trying to apply it. And the other one, doesn't seem to be uh, as quite as, as applicable, but maybe, you know, when you look at this, maybe that's the analog of that, what finding things in the world that are good. So we've got a deontological pluralism. It's a short book. Now I should, before I, I start diving into uh, uh, chapter one, I, I should note that, um, you know, this isn't Ross's final word. As this came out in 1930, not too long after that, a handful of years later, he did the Gifford Lectures, which is quite common for uh, uh, academics of his time. So lots of academics have, have, have done the Gifford uh, Lectures. But he had an, an, another book, which was the product of those lectures, The Foundations of Ethics, um, a much larger work. You know, simply put, this is this is a, a thin little volume packed with information, but a, a, a thin volume. Uh, the Foundations of Ethics is a, is a larger work, and he corrects some of the things that are going on in here. However, the basic framework of this gives you a very good idea of what uh, Sir William David Ross uh, was all about. So, uh, well, without further ado, I'm going to dig in in the next video in, uh, you know, Ross's analysis of the meaning of right.